Welcome back to another video. This week we're going to talk about how you can swim without kicking. Yes, it's true, you heard me. You can swim without using your legs. Believe me, it is such a relief because when you compare swimming to, say, for example, running, running, you have to use your full body weight like 100% of the time. But in swimming, thanks to the water, you can divide that by half, cut off your lower body or upper body, whatever you choose based on what tools you use. And I'm going to show you three tools that I have with me right now that I use on a daily basis to focus on my upper body workouts and just let my lower body just follow along. Uh, before we get into this video, make sure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel, like this video, and hit that notification bell. So let's get started. Bing! Uh, I'm going to show you three tools that I use to practice my upper body uh, front crawl workouts. This only applies to front crawl or freestyle. You could try it on breaststroke if you wanted to, but I find that these tools work best when it comes to front crawl. And I think that most of you are really having a hard time struggling with your front kicking. But in this video, we're gonna do the opposite, okay? We're gonna focus on the upper body and let the lower body take a break, okay? So, how do we do that? Well, we need the right tools. And you're probably familiar with one of these tools, and it's this one right here. And you're probably wondering, what is this? It's, this is called a pull buoy, okay? But we call them marshmallows, okay, as, as swimmers, because as you can see, they're shaped like marshmallows. So what you do with these guys is you just place these between your thighs, and you just let your upper body do all the work, okay? So when you're doing your front crawl arms, like so, yeah, this thing will just hold your lower body up towards the surface of the water. And uh, it's instead of dragging your, your legs like a piano, this thing just lightens the load. It's gonna feel like 50% like of your weight has been just disabled. And it feels like you're really flying. It's a wonderful sensation, believe me. If you've never tried, this before. But uh, here's my caveat when it comes to this uh, particular item. When we were kids growing up, uh, we used to practice with these guys. And obviously when we were kids, we were really small. So these marshmallows were the ideal size for us kids. Okay, they would hold our legs no problem. But as an adult, I find that these things are just not appropriate for guys in particular. For women, uh, holding the marshmallow between their thighs is no problem because women, they have a lot of fat around the hips area, okay? It's totally natural for a woman to have that kind of cushioning. So it's easier for a woman to grip a marshmallow between her thighs. Now for a guy like me, I don't have like thick juicy thighs like a woman, so it's, this is a, har a lot harder for me to grip as an adult. So I find that when I'm holding onto one pool boy, I have to really press towards the, ins the sides in order to hold it. And given the fact that I don't have a lot of fat on me, this thing doesn't really hold my lower body up towards the surface of the water. As you can see in the footage, this thing is barely holding my legs up towards the surface. So you can see that my toes are really sinking. It's almost at a, like a 45 degree angle in the water as I'm pulling. This thing just doesn't hold my lower body up towards the surface. So if you're a guy, here is a solution for you if you want to use marshmallows. They only come in one size. I've never seen these guys come in like a small, medium, or large size. The way around it uh, for these guys, I find, is to have two of them stacked together side by side and then grip it with your thighs as a guy. And with two of these guys gripped together, I have no problem. But you gotta deal with that extra bulk, okay? So instead of this being so thin, you know, your legs are gonna be a little bit wider. So that's the only uh, caveat when it comes to using these as a guy. For As a woman, if you're, if you're a kid, you will have no problem with this whatsoever. Uh, the second item that I like to use in order to disable my lower body and just focus on my upper body is this. Woohoo, a kickboard, okay? Uh, a lot of people don't really train with a kickboard. People usually train using a pool board. I've rarely seen swimmers use this, you know, latch onto this. So basically it's the same premise as the marshmallow. You're gonna latch onto the kickboard with your thighs, but as you can see, there there is no like curve, right? So it's a lot thinner. And you gotta, basically what I do is, 
I take my legs and I cross them like this at the ends. So my legs are not straight like this, but they're crossed like that. And that holds the kickboard in place. And the great thing about a kickboard versus a marshmallow is that the kickboard, when it's placed vertically and you're sinking it into the water, it just, it's a lot more stable, in my opinion, than this guy, okay? So this guy, I have to use two. This guy, I only need one kickboard in order to hold my lower body up. And it really holds my lower body up. I mean, just try, try dunking a kickboard vertically like this. You'll see the resist, you'll feel the resistance, boing, shoot up. And it's really cool to look at. I mean, you can look at the footage here. It looks like a shark fin. And people uh, will notice you, you swimming with this or training with this, and it's pretty cool, I think. One caveat, if you're a guy, make sure you get a really thick kickboard or the biggest kickboard that you can find possible because those thin kickboards, you know, they're really hard to squeeze and uh, yeah, they won't hold you up as well as a heavy, thick kickboard. So the thicker, the heavier, the better. Now, here are the cons to these two items. Either or, or item that you choose, you have to really latch onto them or squeeze them using your thighs. And over time, uh, it can get a little bit tedious for some swimmers, okay? Because again, you're, you're applying pressure with your thighs inwards as you swim, so you're not, 100% letting go of your lower body. So that leads me to the third item, which is, which are these things. These I've discovered uh, recently are ankle floats. These are traditionally used uh, for aqua aerobics. So uh, see those ladies uh, doing those aqua aerobics in the deep water? They wear these things around their ankles and then they, it holds their, their legs up better as they wear like a flotation belt as well at the same time. Now I started uh, experimenting with these, like putting these on my ankles like this. And I find that these are a lot different compared to the marshmallow or the kickboard. Because like I said, there's no tensing involved when you wear these things, okay? So what I'm saying is you don't have to squeeze them together. You can just let them go and let them be. And sometimes you can like, like stretch your legs up far apart if you want. You can do splits if you wanted to. These guys will allow your lower body to be tense free. You don't have to, you don't have to tense any muscles when you put these guys on, all right? And it feels like, compared to the marshmallow and the kickboard, it feels like, you know, your friend is like gently lifting your legs and holding them towards the surface of the water. Okay, so it's a very gentle lift. Okay, you can see in the footage. They do a great job, they don't sink whatsoever. But the problem is, you can see, they are one size, okay? These straps here are not really straps. As you can see, it's one size. You can't really adjust it. You'll feel like this looseness around, see like this? As, as you move throughout the water. There have been times where these things have slipped right off. Uh, so my two solutions for that is to either, you can either uh, be really gentle as you wear these. No flip turns. No, don't even try flip turns with this guy on. <laughs> you can do flip turns with a marshmallow. Uh, flip turns will be a little bit harder with the kickboard. But with these guys, yeah, when you're doing flip turns, with these guys on, it's so loose. They're, they're so easy. They're so prone to slipping off your, your ankles. The second solution is to take a knife and just cut it uh, to your liking. Usually when I put these on in the water, so I just scoot them up to my calf muscle. And then when I'm in the water, then I bring them down towards my ankles. And they're nice and loose, like this. These are the three tools to sum up that hold my lower body up as I'm training my upper body only. And I suggest that you give each of these a try and see which one that you like. Uh, for me personally, I like using the kickboard if I want to show off. I like using the pull buoy, both two of them at a time, if I want to do more flip turns. And I use these ankle floats when I don't really want to tense any muscle any whatsoever in my lower body. If you wanna get your free cheat sheet, 25 pro swimming tips, the link is down below. Get your free cheat sheet right now. Start swimming, visit 7dayswim.co. My name's Justin, 
Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.